So this bus, yeah, designed and built in Norfolk, um, that can convert them overnight into an electric bus. Get a conventional diesel bus, rip the diesel engine out, put an electric motor there. Just like that. Yeah, I was never cool enough to go on the back seat. There we go. Close the door. Right, are you ready? We're not going far, boys. We're just going to have a lap or two around the racetrack. brains behind this bus. He was the brains behind Lotus's Formula One active suspension. So not a mess of like Mika Hakkinen and Johnny Herbert. So you're not a mess of. But look, I'm gonna put my foot down there, boy. That's moving. That is moving. So what's that, nearly 60 mile an hour? There we're on the limiter. Hey boys, I'm impressed. This is the fastest bus in the world take the limiter off, it will do 100 miles an hour, but they knew I was going to be driving it, so they've left the limiter on. Rightly so, I'll tell you. The bus, I'll tell you what we was pushing on with that. My footwork boys, like Lewis Hamilton, in the region, in the region. Oh, she's pushing on boys. Oh. Use all the curb, I paid me entry fee, it's all there for using. Like the way I drove that, I, I was really folding the tyres off the rims. <laughs> the tyres were squealing on the bus. <laughs> How's my boys in the back getting on? That was a cone we got. Yeah, but, yeah, but we murdered it. So obviously, if, and it survived without an issue, without one issue, the brakes didn't fade. Hey, oh, look. Where's the battery? It's still saying it's next door to full. That's like 90 percent. Yeah, 90 odd percent. So if I'm murdering it, that's going to last a lifetime, isn't it? That's going to last a lifetime. Buses lend themselves very well to um, electric vehicles. You're always going back to the depot every night, aren't you? So you've got plenty of opportunity to get it, to get it charged up. And city centres, you know, that's the, the worst, isn't it, for um, smog and pollution. City centres, you know, if you've got electric buses, well, Fantastic. I'd much rather walk through a city centre with electric buses rather than diesel buses. Yeah, yeah why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Fantastic. Should we have a limiter again? It's, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Right, I tell you what, we're going to do one lap, and you're going to tell me what a 116 grand electric Porsche is like. Are we all right? Can we go? Okay. That's fast. That's fast. That's fast. 110, 120, 130. I don't get excited very often. That's It feels like it's going into warp speed. Four wheel drive. This is holding back on the traction control there. That's a good thing. So, what's that? 110, 120, 130, 140, 145. <laughs> I think it had to use the friction brakes then, James. <laughs> Do you think it did? <laughs> As you're clinging on for grim death. Just that speed. My God. It's fun. It doesn't accumulate. That it's is fun. fast, boys. That's fast. <laughs> Just down this little short straight. What? He's sorting it out for you as well, you know. Like if we put me, I'm just putting my foot down now, and it's not, look, it's going where I'm telling the steel, but it's not allowing it to have the... 
the power until it's right I can do that corner I can do that steering angle it's doing the maths I mean the speed of that look at 150 mile an hour and that stops like that my word You had to hold your breath there. You had to hold your breath. I was bracing everything. <laughs> That's fast. I don't know how many times have I said that now. I don't think I've got bored. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm, I'm blown away. I am blown away. I am, I, yeah. I'm blown away. I, I'm, just, I'm struggling to put that into words. Now, how easy to go that fast and it just sorts it out because it knows what it can do. So it knows that that steering angle, that it can't give you all the power. And it's on the verge because you hear the tyre squealing. You just think, God, he can drive. No, I can't drive. I'm a crap driver. But I'm just, I'm just turning, I'm just pressing that thing there and turning the steering wheel. And it's sorting it out and it's making the apex. And it's... We was doing 150 mile an hour down that back. I don't know of a car that had 150 mile an hour down there. Do you? What, what there is beyond that, I don't know. But to hunt, my, my word. That was in normal mode. Right, we need to do a few more laps, don't we? That was in normal mode. Right, we're going to do a launch start now. You ready? So this is how we're going to unleash the full 680 horsepower spread between all four wheels. So we're going to put it in, hang on, Sport Plus. Sport Plus. And I go foot flat on the throttle. I've got the foot flat on the throttle. I'm going to foot on the brake and I'm going to let go of the brake. You ready? <laughs> what would that mean? That must have been like a, a G. I, I genuinely had a thought, what am I going to say about that? I, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe how fast that is. I just thought, oh. I, I, yeah, yeah, I just thought, oh, let me see how excited about electric cam. Yeah, they're all right, Anna, they're all right. <laughs> that is, all right, it doesn't make the noise and doesn't make the cracks and bangs from the wastegate and the turbo and it doesn't smell like it's, but <laughs> that's fast. That is fast. <laughs> Electric vehicle sales in the UK are rising, no, still cars, still but still only represent 6% of the market. They're not going to save the world. To find out more about why consumers may still be put off... Hang on, I'm just trying to sort this... Hey, you're all right, boss, you're all right. Guy speaks to one of the country's leading electric car experts. Ring, ring! TV star turned EV evangelist... Half a million miles in a Tesla. Robert Llewellyn. Guy, can I just ask, are we recording yet? Yes. We are recording. <laughs> it's just I thought I should maybe temper my language a little bit. Ah, fuck that bollocks. He's all he's played. He's flat out with a beat ball. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Hello. This is so 12 years ago, Rob. You bought yeah. an electric car. You was mad into it after meeting these Americans. Yeah. On Scrap Heap Challenge in America. Yeah. yeah. You're the man we need to talk to. Right, we've been on with this programme for three months, right? And these are some of the questions that we've... Well, that we need answering, really. That we need answering. That I'm just, yeah, yeah. So go on. Number one, right? Number one. Electric cars are too expensive. What do you say to that? Absolutely right. They are. They're too expensive at the moment, and there's a lot of very interesting reasons why. But here's the clue: is that they are, are very popular in China. There is a particular make of Chinese car that looks remarkably like a Tesla, <laughs> to a degree that is quite surprising. It goes slightly faster than a Tesla, although there's some contention about that, 0 to 60. It goes further than a Tesla on a charge with a similar size battery. 
and it is $25,000 cheaper on the road in China. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they will get cheaper. They right. have to. Because it's happening in China, it's going to happen here. They're going to end up... Right, okay, okay. Right, question number two. The range okay. isn't good enough. There are some misconceptions. So average driving distance in the UK, 27 miles. In America, 29. I would have always thought it was much higher in America. Right? I do think the cutoff point that you really got to have in an electric car and that uh, is about 100, between 150 and 200 miles. That's three to four hours driving on UK roads. Yeah. And if your car can do that, you really should stop after three or four hours for your own good and for the safety of others. You know, it's a tiring thing. And I would say bladder range. So my bladder range is roughly 165 to 170. I can do that many miles. I'm really <laughs> proud of that. A man my age, I can hold it in, unless I've had a coffee just before I set off, in which case it's guts. My bladder range. Well, if we're going road tripping, we try and do about 500 miles to a tank of fuel. And you can do that long without, you've got an amazing well, bladder. No, 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 don't drink. The rules are quite simple. You're right. Don't drink. <laughs> Because if you drink, if you, if you drink, you're pissing. It's quite simple. It's quite simple. Yeah. I, think. I think there might be some medical practitioners who go, you know, keeping your fluid levels vaguely up is not a bad thing generally. Well, he's, not, he's not coming road tripping with me, is he? <laughs> <laughs> he can drive him send there. <laughs> Are you just frozen down? <laughs> Go on, I'm trying to read these three questions here. Yeah. Infrastructure, like, as it is, it's next door. It's what well, it's a bloody waste of time. Man. Yeah. When, when are we going to get somewhere get near? So you might be able to see that. I've only just taken this, so it's on my phone. So you should be able to see that. So that is, oh, hang on, I'll get it so you can see it. Why can't I work it out? It's backwards for me. Uh, that is, uh, ju it's just opened yesterday. That is um, just on a motorway services, normal a moto motorway services outside rugby. And there are 28 350 kilowatt chargers in a row. And that's what if that doesn't exist at every motorway services in the country and more like not 38 a hundred of those yeah. at motorway services forget it electric cars will never work you yeah. think that's only it's inevitable that that's coming to the rest of the country i think it will Given because time. because Given it time. makes the, i think the big argument i would use it makes economic sense for the country when you see an advert for a new suv that, that you know with a diesel engine or a petrol engine or whatever, you don't see the calculation for the amount of money that leaves our economy every day to pay for the fuel. It's over a billion pounds a day leaves our, leaves our economy as a whole to pay for that oil. And that goes right. to nor mainly Norway, it goes to Saudi Arabia, it goes to Russia. You know, I would love to live in a country where none of our money from this economy goes to President Putin or King <laughs> Faisal. You know, that, that's a big plus for me. Calm, I like that, boy. Right, go on, these other questions. Let's get through these other questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, this is not everyone has got a drive. So say you've got a car, you want to charge it at night, we're having to park a car on the road, how can we realistically charge that? Workplace charging, that's becoming a big thing. That, you know, we're seeing that more. So office blocks where all the parking slots have a charger. And I think the, the, the key thing that, people who've driven electric cars for a long time know is it's grazing so you're not going you're not like you would in a, a petrol car you go empty i'm to going four, to drive i've got to, to stop to get fuel then i'll carry on this one is i've driven there i'm there for four hours meeting someone having lunch doing shopping kids at school while i do this whatever it is while you're there you're plugged in now in that four hours on a low power charger not a fast charger or anything low power same as you'd have at home you could add uh, 12, 100 miles, 120 miles. And you've done, you're not waiting, you're not standing in the rain waiting for it, it's just doing it while you're busy doing something else. Okay, that makes sense. And that is start, our local supermarket, Little Market Town has four at the moment. But and what do they charge you per kilowatt that, hour? That at the moment is free. Is That's it? free. Yeah, because I'm shopping at the shop, I'm giving them money, it's a Tesco's, I'll give them a plug. Right. Other, other supermarkets exist <laughs> with chargers, because <laughs> our co-op also has chargers. Right. Okay, <laughs> Robert, you have been the man. Oh, you're back, you're back. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> you have been, you were the other man. Thanks very much, Guy. Really good to talk Thank to you, mate. Thank you, very good Take to care. talk, mate. Thank you. Love Look after your kidneys and your bladder. Cheers, boss. Thank you. Cheers, okay, mate. mate. See you, boss. Bye. See you, boss. See you, boss. <laughs> Some man. He's, I'm going to go for a piss. Talking to that. Six months ago, Grimsby's answer to Greta decided to buy an electric car of his own. Just like that. But after 10,000 miles in a Honda E, and despite innovations like a dashboard fish tank, girlfriend Sharon remains unconvinced. Why am I not starting? You got keys? No. <laughs> Might help, aren't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
We're all right. Don't be telling me how to drive. Oh, you will, though. Why am I driving this car, guy? Why did you buy this car? <laughs> you ask that, you don't like it, do you? No. I just think it looks cool. I don't know anyone else with an electric car. No, because they've all got bloody sense, Guy, that's why. Because the world's not ready for them. The first problem is that this city car only has a maximum range of 137 miles. I've got complete range anxiety. It, you can't go anywhere in this car without feeling anxious all the time about running out of electricity. Have even, you ever even, run out of electricity? Yes, I have, Guy. When? You know I have. When? When? Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't run out, did you? No, look, you're going to be smug about it now because you got a home, but you got a home with 5% and I had a kid in the back of the car. So that child has got range anxiety. She sits in the back and goes, Mommy, have we got enough electricity? She's three years of age. So you don't like it? You're not an electric car sort of person? I feel like I'm a dog on a leash. The second problem is charging the car up when away from home. Britain's charging infrastructure has been found wanting. Four different places I had to go to to try and get battery charge. Mm -hmm. And the first place I went to was a... Sh I won't mention the name of the garage. It was a large garage and... Oh, the Shell garage. <laughs> OK, you'll mention the name of it. At least you'll get in trouble, I won't. They didn't even know that they had one. Nobody understood what I was trying to do. So they rang another garage. I went to that garage and then they told me I needed an app. Well, that didn't work, because then it decided it didn't want my car. Anyway, it just wouldn't happen. Then they said, oh, go down to this supermarket, because that's working. Both of them out of order. How can you sell cars to people when the infrastructure's not in place for it, yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense to me. Shouldn't this stuff be in place first so that the management of that change is easier than what it is at the moment? Now, take away the range thing on it. I absolutely love driving this. It's absolutely fun car, but no. Fun in what way? Fast. Fast? Yeah. You'd smoke anything? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but yeah, you could you can overtake, theoretically, you could overtake two articulated lorries on a turn. But the fear of running the batteries down is never far away, especially when turning the air conditioning on reduces the remaining range from 96 to 88 miles. This is the funny thing, right? I said to you about the air conditioner, because that's going to drink the battery, right? And then you turned around to me and you said, oh, you put your window down, right? But did you not, when your van arrived, send it back because it had no air conditioner because you wanted air conditioning? Do you know why? No, not because I needed air conditioning, because the day you buy is the day you sell it. If you try and sell that van without air con, you never sell it. The day you buy is the day you sell, Sharon. Oh, I tell you, you could be a politician. So you don't like it? I do like it, Guy. I just think that it's got its place, right? And it's not in Lincolnshire. I feel like an old man in a young girl's body. Oh, I love it, mate. Oh, I love it. Gotta go back to horse and cart. We'd have a job, mate. We'd have a job. <laughs> We'd have a job. I like the Porsche, though, mate. Do you know what? This is... I don't know. I haven't had kids yet, but I feel like I've had one. This is really important to me. So hi, my name is Becky Evans. I'm 28 years old. I'm a content creator and I'm also a presenter these days. Ciao. She's not a messer. What have you done to it since you've owned it? Then? So I put the LSD in it, yeah. new clutch in it, yeah. third and fourth gear synchros because they were shagged. Fucking hell, Lash, you don't mess about. I enjoy oh, it. Me. I enjoy it. I looked at them for years and years and years. It was like the poster car, you know? Like the wide arches and the whale tail and just every cool shot of a car that I ever posted it was one of these, a 930. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. when I was 28, yeah, I just turned 28 and I was like, right, that's it. You're and having then, one? Yeah, and I found this one. German import. German said, import. Yeah. And like some people get funny about that, but the thing is, if you bring a car in from Germany, like you think a lot of the cars that came into the UK were kind of a bug, buggo spec. It's a very standard spec. So you have sunroofs, a lot of guards red, a lot of black, a lot of standard colours because you wouldn't really get that buying experience unless you were German and in Germany at that time. A revered Porsche customer spec'd this, which is why he was able to get this paint sample colour. All oh, right. Yeah. Mask green metallic, it's got no sunroof, no rear wiper, so it doesn't wreck any of the lines as you're coming well, over the back reason, of the car. For that reason, I can see this, you're not making this up, are you? I just bloody love it. 
four speed box, 3.3 litre. In theory, she's 425 brake, but I haven't tested that yet. Oh, dear. Because right. it was upgraded she's by enough, mate. It's fast enough. <laughs> She knows what she's talking about, so she came out straight away with all the numbers and the facts and about a Porsche. And it's like I loved it. I loved the Porsche because it was sort of one concourse, usable, water bottles chucked in the back, teacups, like yeah, fag ends on the. It was mint, you know. I just love it because it was a usable classic. He loved it. Yeah, it, we were pure geeking out inside the car just talking about it. He just, it was like yeah, it's it's really good. Very compact, 964 intercooler, which they lovingly modified to fit, so they just cut straight through the top here. They weren't messing about. No, no. that was done in Germany? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Oh, you said you had a your posh diff put in it? I did put LSD in it. LSDs are more fun. I've got a two-way diff in my S15, so I just, there's loads of fun to be had when you put. What's an S15? Nissan S15. Right, okay. That's your drifting machine? Yes, right, absolutely. Okay. Right, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think I put her at ease with my, um, Denseness. It's driving characteristics. It's very prone to lift off oversteer. Mm -hmm. It's it's all all of the weight bias is in the rear, so you have so far before it lifts up. Do you know what I mean? No. Which was good. I think she knew she didn't have to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's not very clever, is it? No. Mate, I'm not much think of about, a driver. So to think be about honest, it when you're on your bike, right? So when you're coming in, and you can feel the weight coming back over the when you're going in, yeah. you're controlling that weight transfer, right? You are. So if you're not watching this, when you come in, like you can literally just lift itself up because the weight just all shoves forward. Right, okay. And if you're okay. in a corner, and then you literally, and it's very laggy because it's got turbo as well. Right. It's just very easy for it to spin off and spin out. Because it just comes, it just comes in and, and then it's like whoop. Like, I'd be finding a ditch fairly quick, mate. <laughs> but anyway, it was great. It was great, it was great. We got on the vest. No silences on that, is there? That no. sounds the part, mate. That sounds the part. Got on the best. Um, yeah, and she could wagon the beast. She could wagon it. How do I encapsulate what I think of him? I think he's bloody brilliant, really. Like, you can just get on with him. He's got great crack. He's a pure enthusiast and he will chat the hind legs off the donkey about cars and he'll really go into it with you. Yeah, we were talking about LS7s and V46, Nissan v, um, V6s. Like we were getting into the nuances between Toyota 2JZs and VR engines sat in there. Jams, I've got one in my shed. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it's mint. Love that. It's mint. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, I'm delighted that Old you like school, it. Old school, mate. Old school. Good. Some stories to tell, lass. I'll tap, thank no you. Worries. The handbrake shite on this thing. Right, so your plan is to take it on a track then? Oh, 100%. So my name is Kaiser Selene. Online, I'm known as The Kaiser, mainly on Instagram, and I'm a vehicle concept artist. Self-taught all the way from, from Photoshop and graphic design to 3D modeling and 3D design. So I've been creating digital art like this for the last seven, eight years. Right, okay. Kaisel, what a boy. How trick does that look? And that's not real. Humble, just dead humble with it all. Camaro, completely changed, renovated. Yeah, there's um, not a lot left of a Camaro. No, there, there isn't, is there isn't. You are the man. Uh, autonomous McLaren 570S concept. I'm right into what he does because it took a bit to realise that that never existed. Oh yeah, it was just an artist's impression, but it was just so good for the detail and how it was all put together. You thought, like, surely that exists. No, 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 that's just an artist's impression. Modernised and changed and adjusted and more oh, and twisted. Or carbon yeah. body Cobra. Yeah, yeah. It's the way you've got your oil hoses and the oil cooler in the front. <laughs> just, you know, just like that with the Liana <laughs> Dye things. That it's just the little out. mechanical details. Yeah, yeah, that's I, what I, like. I love it. Um, this was a Toyota Corolla rally kind of car. Yeah, it's got the right mud flaps on it. It just looks right having a mud flaps, yeah. right? Got the yeah. mud flaps on you. Yeah. yeah, he'd done a bit of a render of, 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 the, of the Beetle and he, he sort of knocked that out in an hour. It's creating just something different, something we're not used to seeing, something unique. 
but it's also something that may inspire other people with their real world builds. Um, and I think it's why I enjoy creating these vehicles so much, just because people can't tell if they're real or not. You know, they'll look at something, it could be a slammed Ferrari or something completely crazy, an electric Porsche. And the fact that it can go from something digital to something real, I think is really special. That's why things like this get created as well. So this is another cool. project that I've been a part of cool. this? called Moby X. This is a modern interpretation based off the Porsche 935 L. It's just a car that I love, the slant nose. Mm -hmm. And um, this is being built this year um, oh, as an all electric vehicle. Is it? Yes, does, yeah. Does the car being electric without an internal combustion engine, does it give you a bit more window of opportunity for not having to account for calling fans and ducts and all that. Yeah, sort of I mean, there's plenty of space to mess around with things. Like on you know, like a, um, it just allows you to have a lot more freedom to create something truly unique and different. He did like a Mark II Golf, and this German had seen this Mark II Golf that he'd made this render of. It's, you know, he'd never, and he's, this German was over the moon with it. He says, "I'm going to build that car," and he's built, he's built, he's built it. That's my render. That's yeah. the real car. Shit. Let's just have a look at that. The render, the real car. I've got that the right way around. Yeah. You won't be long getting confused, would you? <laughs> My word. You know, and no matter how many times it happens, it still always gets me that it, it you know, it's something that went from digital screen from here to something you can touch and drive, you know. Look at that. It-it's an R34 with pop-up right. headlights. Um, <laughs> he's a legend. He's a legend. He's awesome. He's yeah, he's so down to earth. Oh, yeah. another pickup, mate. Yep. Oh my God, look at that. Look at the side pipes. He's so invested. He's got a <laughs> side pipes, mate. My God. Yeah. I love that. Uh, what love a good, weapon. Love a good, love a good pickup. He's so passionate. In the way you put like the dump valves and the wastegates and all of that, you've, you've incorporated all that shit into it. Yeah. I mean, my, my knowledge in terms of engineering is very limited, but I am, it's something I'm learning on the side just to try and better my concepts and make them more real. Yeah, so it's quite inspiring to see, really, you know, that people like that still exist and are embracing the future as well, you know. It's because it's, we have to, you can't stay in the past forever. Pretty much, yeah. That's how mad it is. I'm nervous, mate. <laughs> Take it easy. But you can tell instantly what I was saying. Like, for a road car, this is loud. This is about drama. This is about experience, right? Tell me what's it like for lag. I mean, what you notice with this car is low and very small look. Yeah. So. And you hear it through the snorkel as well. OK. In the lower end of the rev range, you're just kind of waiting for it a little bit. But then, obviously, when you're full shifting at the red line, you're straight into the next gear, and immediately it's just giving you everything straight away again. Are you a turbo man? Do you like turbos? Do you prefer a naturally aspirated engine? Um, um, blown all the way really. I can't do 300 miles an hour in a standing mile on my motorbike. So I've got a <laughs> modified eye boost, it runs on alcohol, yeah. chucking out 800 horsepower. <laughs> so one of the interesting things with this car is they've done a lot of uh, dummy preparation basically by not allowing you to use all of the power unless you've pressed a few buttons because right. otherwise people are going to stop it. So I had my foot flat there. But it, oh, right. Yeah, but it wasn't letting it us. It wasn't letting you have... No, the car was basically saying, no, don't do that. And what's this speed or gear position blade? It runs different map per gear. I guess so, but then when you unleash it... Yeah. <laughs> fast, mate. It gets a little bit lively, doesn't it? That's fast, mate. So where did you race your Taycan against this? Just on a runway. We just took them to a higher yeah. runway for the day because I wanted to see what it would be like for the two cars back to back. So I think it's a fascinating, you know, and this was exiting, yeah, exiting. One point. Yeah, sorry, so sorry, this sorry. would get to the quarter mile at about 146, I think it was. And the yeah. Taycan was about 123. Right, massive. As a quarter. Yeah. 
the, the thing with this car... But your ET was some, more or less the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are you saying? You was low tens, mid tens? So they were basically both doing about 10.3, 10.4, Yeah, 10 yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the yeah. thing is, you know, with an EV, is with the Taycan, the difference from when it had 80% charge at the start of the day to 20% charge at the end of the day is huge. The, the time was significantly dropping off from 10.3 oh, down right. to... Oh, I thought the repeatability was no, the main it, it was gain going down. Of, uh, at 80% 80, 80 charge, we were doing like 10.3s, and by 20% charge, it was doing 10.8. Shit, yeah, not, so a, not just a little bit of difference. Half a second. Half difference. a second? Yep. That's lifetime. Completely. Yeah, we were, we were genuinely shit. surprised by it. So intimidating. You see those big air scoops and the big wing when you look out of them. Ah, the wing mirror. My word. So can you run this fully automatic then? Yes, of course, yeah, you can pop it to the full yeah. auto. Oh, the stones. Yeah. <laughs> Some anchors on it, aren't it? Oh, the anchors are incredible. Well, what's that telling you there? Uh, ESC in dynamic mode. Right. So that it doesn't hold us back. Seriously, yeah. if you put it into full on and you know you're in second gear, I'll put my foot flat to the floor, that's it. My foot was right. flat on the floor. And the car basically just says, I don't think you wanted to do that. I'm not, I'm not gonna let you put this car in a hedge. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got to have a little bit of a little bit of a plan when you uh, when you do engage it. And it's also being the computer generation through this tablet, which is you know nicely floating in the center console, it's got variable drift control. Holy shit. If you'd like to set up the angles of attack that you'd like out of it. So um, this only comes to life when you start playing with it, but you can choose how many angles of slip the car will let you have. And would you <laughs> fine tuning all these on your track day as well? Yeah, playing around, getting a feel for what you can do and what you'd like. And it's, it's obviously got the track telemetry system, so it will give you your, uh, your lap time split. Delta, you oh, you get your Delta up on the dashboard in front yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah, so you can set, right set the times on the previous yep, lap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can set it all up, make it how you'd like it. How long are you going to keep it for? I'll keep this car. One, of my, one of my favourite things is having a car from you and, you know, effectively feeling like I'm holding it for, you know, my children or their children or something yeah, in the future. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. these are special things um, and I feel very lucky to be able to build up these stories with them myself. So something like this, I'll no point in selling it, you know. I get to I get to drive this thing and to use it and it's a dream. You do with a car like this though just have to have your wits about you. You know, just the the ridiculousness of it. If you lapse in concentration for a moment, it's gonna go wrong very quickly just because foot down. And it's it's silly, it's absolutely silly. It's like any idea what sort of longitudinal G you pull? I don't, but I wouldn't be surprised if I've got a G-force meter somewhere. Right. <laughs> I still get giddy at the ferocity yeah, of it, you know? It's unusually raw for a road car. In many ways, it feels like track car. If I was anywhere near that steering wheel, boy, we would generally find a ditch bomb. And then you've got the funny things, like the air conditioning button is up here turn that on, make it a bit colder, because why not? That obviously has to be on the roof, doesn't it? <laughs> There's actually a reason for it, a shorter wiring loop by having the controls up there. Shit. The problem I have when I'm driving this car is that my cheekbones start to ache because I'm always smiling so much. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wonder what it means when it comes up blue in the window, like the near side front tyre? Yeah, I guess. I wonder what he's telling you there. The, the front left is cold. Right, okay. I've not been pushing my front left hard enough. Interesting, I wouldn't have expected that to be the, uh, the one that's cold. But anyway, maybe down to how it's parked, obviously that makes a different difference with these things. Head back to where we were. Sound job, Tim. Thank you very much for this. Absolute pleasure. Our man, Tim. Nice bloke, really knowledgeable, intelligent man, passionate about what he's doing with the cars. Some numbers he knows. 
it was great to meet Guy, to get some of his enthusiasm and understanding very much more of the technical side. I'm very into the numbers, the facts, the figures and, and the modern details, let's say. But he really has an understanding of everything and what's going on underneath the skin and to talk a little bit more about that. And to, I think, be able to show him the center and what the center is like as well, because it's a tremendously exciting car for me. And I often say that one of my favorite things personally about owning such cars, whether it's through my YouTube channel or whether it's taking somebody like Guy out for a drive, is being able to share what that is like. You know, it's so much more than just experiencing it myself. For the doors. <laughs> and then push it with your elbow. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tim. <laughs> I think he got out quite enjoying that. I think he had a good time. Teach Guy how to do a social media post about this man. Go on. Yeah, go on. Give him the basics. How would I start? Like, mate, I, like, what are we talking? Got... What are we talking? A YouTube video, Instagram, TikTok, the whole lot? You want you like, what are all those platforms? Are oh, they not all the same? <laughs> oh, no, same. you've got to do it differently for them all. You gotta do different. You gotta introduce the video. You gotta say where you are, what you're doing, talking about your van. You know, you're here today, caffeine and machine. You're taking a look and run through the details. Oh, so you want me to start then? Yeah. Well, it's the MAN TGE 3180. 180. Get the 180 bit in. Directing. That's the twin turbo, mate. That's yeah, the twin turbo. Okay. It's, um, the it's the heavy one. It's 3.2 ton. Uh, two sliding doors. Parking sensors, tow bar, you need to, you need two, to be... side, two side door, 180 back doors. You've got to be more scripted, you've got to be more like snap, 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 go, 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 go. roll with it. <laughs> come on, come on. This come is on, where I do the hug. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Today we're at Caffeine and Machine. We're taking a look at the lovely MAN TGE 3180. Blah, 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 straight in with it. Fast, snappy, attention, internet. Go, 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 go. Go. Now, mate. Um, well, yeah. I bought it. <laughs> I bought it about. <laughs> 10 months ago, it's done just over 20,000 miles. Um, original tyres, original tyres. I don't know, like the Transit did 65,000 on its original tyres. This has done 20, I'm gonna move them to the back. I don't think we'll see 50. People I don't think we'll see 50. People turning It's up. turning, yeah, no, no, you need to know, the boys, the boys are interested. They tell you it does 38 <laughs> to the gallon. In a real world, it's probably doing 29, 28 to the gallon, summers like that. The very That's way. not too bad. I don't know, when it's I mean, towing, when it's stuff. towing, you couldn't tip it out of the back faster. Thanks for watching. That's it. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Cheers, Doc. See Jobs ya. of peace. <laughs> <laughs>